Hello guys and welcome back to another guide and today we're starting our logistics guide which I hoped I'd cover in a single video however there's a lot to get through so we've divved it up into several smaller guides and today we're talking about conveyor buses. So if you do enjoy this video be sure to hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and possibly join us on Twitch. Now we will first cover what a bus is, the pros and the cons of using them, and types of conveyor layouts, and where I'd personally recommend them. You can find the timestamps below. So to start off, conveyor buses refer to the method of transporting items along a conveyor track between two locations, which isn't to be confused with a manifold that splits items off along a manufacturing line. Now there are some huge pros to using conveyor buses over other transportation, the first being that currently all in-game logistics are limited by belt speed one way or the other, with the exception of fluids. Conveyors are also a lot less buggy, especially when used in multiplayer games, and can be built to look pretty neat, and if it's only one or two conveyors that's being transported, then they can take up a lot less room, whilst also easily covering any verticality problems in your path thanks to conveyor lifts, and unlike trains and trucks, do not require any power or fuel to use them which makes them very useful. However, in terms of resource usage and item throughput, they are only better for short distance busing, which we'll go into more depth in the following videos, and larger buses can actually take up a lot more room, so there are some cons. So with that in mind, let's cover some conveyor layouts. Early game you'll often use a single conveyor, however before long you may well upgrade them to several stacks high using the stackable conveyor poles. For these conveyor buses I recommend always placing on foundations, with it being only along the vertical axis, it allows for easy splitting of items and splitter placement. However, you may find yourself creating larger buses expanding along the horizontal axis as well, making it difficult to split items without clipping. This particular style is great for taking items along long distances from, say, nodes to a factory without needing to split them off and can come in a varied number of forms from ground buses, underfloor buses, to suspended overhead buses. The, the concept is the same for each bus. An underfloor bus requires you to build the first floor first and then house the conveyors on this floor, covering them with another foundation and you could also use something like the half pipes like I've done here. And for ease, you may also want to use the conveyor walls. We've already covered the buses on the ground, and of all the buses, these are the ones that I recommend avoiding, as it can just become an obstacle within a factory or even when you're out exploring. Next, we have the suspended buses. These can be done by placing towers along a foundation line, connecting the conveyors between the conveyor walls. Alternatively, you can use this in a factory and place a floor above them for another manufacturing line. My favourite of the bus designs is one that I'm going to coin with the name Weave and Hide Bus. It was inspired by a Weave conveyor bus posted on Facebook by Gabor Barat and suggested dropping down and splitting and merging the items before bringing them back up. Now this style takes up a lot of space, but looks clean and can split and merge items easily, making it great within a factory. The way that I've done this particular build is that first we place a floor down, followed by a series of half pipes. These half pipes will contain the bus. Notice how I place the splitter and the mergers in the middle of a foundation, along one plane, and also the placement of the conveyor poles, both just before 
and after the foundation edges that the splitter or merger is placed on. This allows us to have a bus just under the floor which drops down a level before being split. You can also match this with glass foundations and walkways to give some seriously clean looks as well as pipes. Just make sure that you're not bussing any large items as they may poke through and ruin the aesthetic. Now at this point I shall touch on special buses that are vertical or use smart splitters. So firstly, most buses should not merge with different items. There are exceptional circumstances, but it's not worth the hassle in most cases. And you'll probably only use this if you're bussing items to a storage facility, splitting off individual items, and even so you should always have the splitters set to the overflow method and have an awesome sink at the end as a backup in case everything does start to back up. Next, I wanted to touch on vertical buses that split items between floors. Now, generally speaking, it's easier to split items on a floor, but if you really need to do this along a vertical bus, you will need to stagger your lifts, splitters and mergers. You can use three on a single foundation and you can set these up by stacking 10 splitters, connecting the vertical bus and then deleting the stacked splitters or mergers in between. If you repeat this process, you'll have a splitter or merger with two free inputs or outputs per elevation, which can be used. And you can stagger each vertical line to allow you multiple bus lines in a single foundation. Now, if you do not need to split items vertically, you can use a setup like this to transport items between floors, or even like this, using the three conveyor wall outputs. So this brings us to our next question, where should we place our buses? Well, generally, if they're outside the factory, most people run conveyor buses along the floor. This is perfectly fine, however, if you are running larger bus lines together, it would be ideal to have these lifted off the ground so they're out of the way of your exploring. And more often than not, I recommend using short bus lines, pulling items to say a train station, which would then take the items to another factory or another train station nexus to be split into specific trains. When they arrive at a factory again, I would recommend using the weave and style bus approach to take the items to the manifold lines, but that is my personal preference. Feel free to not do that. If, however, you're playing a multiplayer game and don't want to play with trains or vehicles due to their buggy state, then again, I'd also recommend the use of conveyor bus lines, but elevate them to keep them nice and clean and out of the way of anyone running or driving around below. Although there is a lot more to talk about, I feel this covers all the need to know aspects for conveyor buses. We'll go into more details about the other options for trains, vehicles and liquids, along with other logistic suggestions over the coming weeks. So if you do have further questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section below and I'll endeavour to respond. Anyway, guys. If you did find this video helpful, please do drop a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. Anyway, guys, until next time, as always, ciao for now.